Hi there. Okay, so this is section three of cellular respiration, and we're going to be looking at stage three of aerobic respiration, which is the electron transport chain. Now, people really struggle with this particular stage of respiration. I personally feel like the citric acid cycle is the most evil stage, but people do struggle with this particular one. Um, I've got a slide at the end to sort of summarize everything if you've really been struggling with this particular key area. But hopefully I'll manage to clarify some things for you as we go through. Uh, sorry for my drawings. I drew them all on paint and I'm not an artist. So well, we're just going to have to get on with that. Uh, so electron transport chain is the last stage of aerobic respiration and it takes place across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So just like how we looked at the citric acid cycle was the matrix of the mitochondria. If you have a look at the picture, you can see I've highlighted the inner membrane of the mitochondria and that's the membrane that runs between the matrix and the sort of outside bit of the mitochondria. Again, in an exam question, you wouldn't have to identify the location based on a picture, but you do have to be able to say this stage is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This stage is the great one because it yields most of the ATP. So far from glycolysis, we got two ATP. We get a tiny amount out of the citric acid cycle. So it's this last stage that's gonna yield the most ATP for us and help keep our cells alive. It requires the hydrogen and electrons collected by NAD in the earlier stages. Now, if you remember this idea, in the glycolysis, NAD was becoming NADH. In the citric acid cycle, NAD was becoming NADH. All of that NADH was gathering, 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 and the idea is it's carrying itself to the inner membrane so that it can use that hydrogen and electrons that were cleaved off for this process here. My wonderful picture. Now, this picture is showing the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So you've got your little phospholipidy type things that are along the inner membrane and then you've got some chunks of stuff which if they're not phospholipids are going to be proteins so we've got a big purple protein a green protein a yellow protein and a kind of gray blue protein okay step one nadh arrives at the membrane and releases the hydrogen ions and electrons so the hydrogen ions are the little pink h pluses the electrons are the little orange e negatives okay um and we're just don't worry about the charge of them. You just need to know it's hydrogen ions. You cannot say just hydrogen. So hydrogen ions and the electrons. OK, so that is step one. It's arrived at the membrane. In stage two, this looks bad, but, but sort of bear with me. The idea is the electrons use their energy and give it to the proteins, the membrane proteins, and they use that to force the hydrogen ions across the membrane via the protein channels. Effectively, it's like a type of active transport. It's, it's not really active transport, but it's like a, a type of active transport. So the hydrogens get forced across that membrane. You can see they did start below the membrane and they're now above it. So they get forced across that membrane and it's the electrons, the idea is they're traveling down from protein to protein to protein and they're still ending up staying on the same side of the membrane, okay? but. If you're not quite grasping that diagram, the sentence will cover it for you. Energy from the electrons is used to force the hydrogen ions across the membrane via the protein channels. Step three, we've got a huge accumulation of hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane and less on the other. And the idea is the hydrogen ions are going to flow back through a different protein called ATP synthase. As they flow through it, the enzyme is going to spin around, it's going to rotate, and that's going to create a lot of ATP. So there's quite a lot happening in this diagram. Right, let's ignore the electrons. The electrons are exactly the same as they were before. But we've got our hydrogen ions that have flowed through this big purple protein uh, from the top down to the bottom. And as they flowed through, they spun this ATP synthase enzyme around. And I love the name of that enzyme. It just tells you exactly what it does. It's called ATP synthase. Synthesis must be making. It's literally an enzyme that is there to make ATP. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, and the idea is ADP and PI are going to be joined together by the spinning enzyme to create loads of ATP, absolutely buckets of it. Now, we have a problem at the end. We've got a bunch of hydrogen ions and electrons sitting about doing nothing. And this is where the aerobic side of things comes in. The hydrogen ions and electrons join together with oxygen to form water. And that's the final product. But if you think back to your um, word equation that you learned in National 5 at the very start, glucose plus oxygen, arrow, carbon dioxide, water plus ATP. 
So the idea is we've dealt with the carbon dioxide in the citric acid cycle, we need to produce this water. So we do that by bringing in the oxygen, and the oxygen is the final acceptor of hydrogen. So the idea is it's going to react with the oxygen and it's going to produce water. Hydrogen is H2, sorry, water is H2O. The idea is we need the H and the O, they combine together, there we have some water. Exam question that comes up, what is the final acceptor of hydrogen? The idea is it's oxygen. Oxygen accepts the hydrogen into itself and creates H2O, creates the water. Now that is the whole of the electron transport chain and yet lots of people really, really struggle with these stages of it. Okay, the wording, the numbers one, two, three, and four, the wording underneath the diagrams, that should be plenty to get you through any kind of exam question about it, whether it's an essay or anything like that. The inner membrane is never drawn the same way twice. The ATP synthase does tend to be that shape. It tends to be a kind of almost phallic shape that is there um, across the membrane, but it's, it's never really drawn the same way twice. Um, but you do need to know the name of ATP synthase, you need to know that electrons are the things that give the energy to force the hydrogen across the membrane, hydrogen ions will flow back through ATP synthase, ATP is created, and then oxygen will combine with hydrogen to create water. Easy. Now, there's thousands of these groups of membranes, uh, sorry, groups of proteins all along the inner membrane of mitochondria. The one we looked at, we just looked at one of them on the membrane. The idea is there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And I love this little gift because it shows exactly what happens during this, this stage. Okay, so there are thousands of these groups of the membrane proteins all along the inner membrane. So we're going to zoom into the inner membrane there looking at the GIF. And the idea is there's your hydrogen being pumped across and there's your hydrogen being pumped across again. And the idea is it's then going to flow back through ATP synthase. There's your ATP being made. And the idea is oxygen should then come along and clear up the hydrogen. OK, now the presence of thousands and thousands of these groups means you can get a constant stream of ATP molecules as long as you have glucose and oxygen. You need to make sure they've got glucose. You need to make sure you've got oxygen. OK, let's summarize all of that, because that, that was a lot. That was a lot. So uh, we're going to compare each stage based on its stuff about it. So the categories that are uh, going down the left hand side. So if we look at number of ATP made. In glycolysis, it is two. You still need to know that number. So overall, we make two ATP. But remember that investment of two, our yield of four. So overall, we, we gain two. In the citric acid cycle, we get a small amount. In the electron transport chain, we get a large amount of ATP. The location of glycolysis is the cytoplasm. The citric acid cycle is the matrix of the mitochondria. And the electron transport chain is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The raw materials for glycolysis are glucose. That's it. The raw material for the citric acid cycle is pyruvate slash acetyl. OK, and the raw material for the electron transport chain is hydrogen ions, electrons and oxygen. The products for glycolysis is pyruvate. The product of the citric acid cycle is carbon dioxide. That's the main one. And the product of the electron transport chain is water. Now, this table here is the three processes stripped really, really far back. It's not including the role of acetyl-CoA, of NAD, of dehydrogen, uh, de dehydrogenase enzymes. OK, so bear in mind, this is really, really stripped back. I'd only focus on this if you've really, really been struggling with the three videos that we've been covering on this topic. It is a challenging topic. Again, I would recommend you find all the past paper questions that you can. Look at the language that they're using. Look for common questions that appear. I'd say really helpful practice is the essay questions on this. I know you don't want to do them because they are horrible and they've got a lot that you have to say. But writing out the whole process over and over and over again is actually a really helpful thing. And remember your flashcards. So flashcards for new substances that have come in here, like ATP synthase, like NAD, like acetyl, like oxaloacetate. Really helpful for helping you to learn this process as a whole. Now, that is us done key area seven out of eight of unit one. The last key area is about energy systems in muscles and cells. So the differences between different types of muscle tissue. And we will also be looking at lactate metabolism, which in National 5 we covered under fermentation. So it might be a good idea to look back at that topic then. And me and Miss Armstrong will see you for that video in about a week. OK.